Hey guys, girls, welcome back to the 40th example video here. Congratulations, we are 40. 40 is great, 40 is nice, 40 is beautiful. Um, today we're going to be going through a little more on those efficient, really efficient pointer pointer dynamic arrays. And that's a mouthful right there, but I'm sure you'll get it. I'm sure you'll understand this if you know how to use pointers and what's going on. So follow through here and we'll see that will make sure that you know how to create a very efficient dynamic array and and that you know how a vector works and how the insides of a vector looks like so this is basically it these are pointer pointer arrays and they're very important the way I went through it last time was a little brief so to speak and this time we'll go through and I'll show you how to pass those into functions and how to pass those around and delete and make new and stuff like that so let's just start with a capacity we'll start with five and then we'll say number of element elements equals zero and then we'll make our actual pointer pointer array array and it's a new integer pointers cap now remember we need to initialize these this is how I like to do it some people don't really initialize them just when they add stuff they'll still be initialized and then they will never use cap to go to that point but I like that in case of an emergency in case something happens I like to know that they're null pointers and this helps me just stay safe in the world so that means we can do this as well so remember how we deleted a regular pointer array it was just delete array okay because everything we knew that it was just a a straight line of stuff that we could delete but here we know that every thing in that line can have a value in it so it's kind of like a two-dimensional array Kind of, not really, but kind of. But uh, And every one of those has to be deleted first. And then we'll go ahead and delete the whole pointer, all of the pointers there. Okay, so here we're just deleting the pointers. We're not deleting what they're pointing to inside. Here we're deleting what they're pointing to first. So delete array at position i. It will delete all of these. And the thing here is, if it knows that it's a null pointer, it will just not delete it. That's why this is good. If we didn't have this, we'd have a crash here. If we didn't initialize it, we'd have a crash here. Look at this. This is like, oh, why? Why are you trying to delete something that doesn't isn't pointing to something? Well, if it's a null pointer, it will know. Oh, you're trying to delete a null pointer. It's fine. I won't crash. I'll just jump over that. This doesn't mean that it has a value. It's just that it's not. The computer knows it's not pointing to something. Here, it's undefined. So you need that, or you like to have that actually. So there you go. Now the the thing here, the important thing is that. Uh, I want to show you how to expand an a array like this, which is important. You're going to be doing this in classes, like I said before. So you won't be really using functions this way, but I still want to show you how you pass them into a function if you ever need to do that. A pointer pointer, how do you pass that into a function? Well, remember that you had a regular pointer array. How did you pass this in so you could really manipulate it inside? Not just the values, but inside. How to delete it and make new and stuff on it. Well, you made a pointer reference, right? Okay. Cap int number of elements. And I won't go through and, and do all the uh, constant and stuff. I don't need to do that in this little thing here. I just wanted to go pick on that before in the previous examples. But anyway, we need a reference on cap because we're going to be increasing it. Number of elements isn't going to be touched, really. So it could just be a... a uh, a thingy here, uh, value, pass by value, and then we have our pointer reference. But how do we do it for pointer pointers? Well, just like that, pointer pointer reference. Easy, right? I know it looks really complicated, but this tells the computer that, okay, I, I don't just want to take a pointer pointer in here. I want to actually access that pointer pointer and be able to allocate and deallocate memory from it. So there are steps for that. Step one. Step one is uh, increase capacity. Okay, so cap multiply by itself, two. Step two is uh, uh, create temp array. Okay, so we create a new temporary pointer pointer array. Remember, because we're going to copy over stuff from this one, we want this to point to a pointer pointer, right? Not just a pointer. So pointer pointers. The, what, what this is pointing to, these uh, single array of pointers, are going to point to single pointers. But... Here we need a pointer pointer. Oh my god. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Let's just keep going. So this is a new integer pointer. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, with the new cap. So this is the doubled capacity. And it, it's the bigger one. And then we have step three. 
initialize new initialize temp array and this is in capitals because this is important because uh, I think it's important because this is initialized and the new part of the array should also be initialized so we'll do cap we'll say temp array initialize equals uh, null pointer and I know a lot of people will hate me it's an extra step it's not really necessary uh, or x sorry there uh, yeah, they'll be like, oh, why are you doing this? You don't need to do this. Well, I do. I do. I'm sorry. I'm really anal when it comes to this stuff. I need to initialize my stuff. So there you go. Step four is to actually copy over things from array. Step four, copy over things from old array, actually, specifically. So that will do with number of elements. Because remember, number of elements is keeping track of how many valid elements there are in array. Okay, we don't want to use cap again here because cap has been doubled and the old array isn't that size, so it's going to be, there are going to be a lot of errors here. So number of elements secures the fact, or it tells us that uh, we'll never override or go past the bounds of the old array. So uh, temp array at position i equals array at position i. So you can do this. This is a way to do it. Every single pointer there will be pointing to the pointers in here. Okay, but what I like to do, we can do both, we can try both, we can try both. This is what I like to do. So say that the at this position, there is a 5. This is what would happen. The temp array at position 0 would be a new integer of the value 5, because the value at array position 0 would be 5, if we had that in here. We don't right now, but if we would, that's what it would do. Okay, so then, step 5 delete old array okay so again again delete array now the thing here is really important if you do this way if you do this we have made completely new integers in here with the value so these old values are still here they're still somewhere in the memory we need to delete them okay we need to go through number of elements and we need to delete array at position i Okay, every every single one of those. Now, if we did the other way, with just the pointer pointing to it, remember, if we did this, then we'd actually delete those values because these pointers would be pointing to those pointers. They wouldn't create new versions of them. They'd be pointing straight to them. And if we delete this, they would be pointing to the same thing. Then we'd remove the valid values. We don't want to do that. But in this case, we can. I hope you're following here. Step six, point old array to new one okay so we'd say array equals temp array and we'd have a complete expansion of our array okay there we go these are the steps and we'll see if this works all right first we'll see if this actually doesn't crash which it did not and then we'll try expand array cap number of elements just like that and it didn't crash so we can expand properly and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to whoops for loop oh my god for loop go through number of elements and we'll just say c out array at position i and line and we'll also print out the, uh, the thing here and of course dereference it if we want the value here we could take the address as well just to show you because remember these are pointers where we're talking about here so array position i okay this would give us the address to this pointer in this position this would give us the value that pointer is pointing to okay and uh, just do that this might look a little confusing in the beginning but i don't think it's going to print anything out right now nope we don't have any values so uh before we expand actually we will do this we'll make a void add function so add int element to array int pointer pointer reference array int capacity and int number of elements just like that so what's going to happen is that if uh, number of elements is larger or equal to cap then we need to expand right we have a full array so expand array cap number of elements okay and in the end 
since we're done, we'll say that array at position number of elements plus plus equals a new integer of the value element. Okay, remember, since there are pointers there, we need to make a new in those positions there. So we'll add something. So there we go. Now we don't have to have expand here. We'll just ha actually have to add stuff. So let's see. Array expanded. New size uh, cap. Okay. See how added. Oh, wait. Element added. And then uh, number of L and Y. So in this way, we'll see when we add stuff and when it expands and stuff like that. So we'll just do add. Let's say we add a bunch of fives to array cap number of elements. Okay, we'll add a bunch of fives. So let's just add three because we know the cap is five, so it shouldn't expand. Okay, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. And it printed out printed out uh, the address and the actual value at that address and the index. So let's add up to five. It shouldn't expand still. It didn't expand. Good. If we add a sixth element here, it should expand. It will expand, actually. So, bam, array expanded, new size 10, 5 added, number of elements 6. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 6 elements here. And it expanded. We have our pointers here, and that's good. And the beautiful thing here is that, like I said in the previous video, the remaining 4 spaces that are empty aren't integers. They're pointers to integers. They're saving memory. They're not consuming a lot of memory there, just waiting to become integers. Instead of having those integers be zeros or something initialized and just taking up memory and but not being used. So that's why this is so much more efficient. And I hope you can see that, guys and girls. This is a lot better. And this is how you pass them into functions. And these are the important steps to expanding a pointer pointer array. So thank you for watching. I really hope you followed through and you learned something here. Rewatch stuff. Go ahead, work hard. I'm sure you'll be pro in no time if you're not pro already. All right? Thank you again for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.